Um, so once again, uh, if we're looking at the concepts such as you know relationships and this inheritance relationship, which is is a. By the way, it works very well over here on this on this drawing as well, right? So you you could argue that you know this bigger box is also the you know it works uh, it works as a smaller box as well because it already contains these smaller boxes right so although you have this bigger box still inside it has smaller boxes so it it it, it works right so this box technically is also this box because it, it has it it, it it already has it inside so it 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 contains it and it does everything the bigger box can do everything that the smaller box can do okay so it's both logically and physically this 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 is a very agreeable concept in terms of uh inheritance and uh, the test for is a at the same time any sort of composition association or, or aggregation uh, represents interaction between objects. Uh, look, uh, over here, when we create, uh, you know, the savings account class, which has uh, an account class part of it, there is no choice for us to make whether to have an account or not to have an account. If you have a savings account, you also have an account. There is no choice to make. It's instant. Creating a savings account, account is part of it inherently in established part of it so there's no 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 choices to make however if I decided to have uh, you know this uh, this uh, savings account also associated with another class which is like uh, an, an, an insurance policy or, or something else or asset or something else and and somewhere here we have basically inside this uh, this uh, class we have a, a a reference to to this guy then we on on the uml diagram and let me kind of switch to a, a thinner line okay so the uml description of it would be that this this class is associated with another class and of course in uml just just draw boxes and you can draw like maybe directed uh, actually, let me just make it make it clear that uh, you know it's just a not filled, just a very simple type of arrow that I'm using here. So uh, this demonstrates that if, if some other object was you even used as part of, of this box, uh, but was connected simply just by association. Or, or composition or aggregation. We say that typically we're talking about interaction between objects, right? Because at this point, if we want to run this software and we want this box to do something useful, whereas this, this other box is also involved, then for this all to happen, they need to communicate. They need to call each other methods and so forth. In this case, obviously, this box will be calling this box. This class will be uh, working with this class, making some calls to its methods. So typically, association, it's an interesting aspect of design that association suggests that objects interact. At runtime, they will both exist, and some interaction will be taking, taking place. It's interesting to compare it with EASE. Does uh, interaction exist there? You know, you could say yes, but uh, so again, taking taking a look at the account versus a savings account. What happens is that the savings account simply inherits all of this. The savings account gets you know bigger because it gets everything that the account has. And therefore, there is no interaction. We have saving a savings account, which inherits everything that the account has. And therefore, there is not much interaction. If you're calling a method that savings account inherited from the account, it's, it's the same as say that saving account has implemented that method on its own. 
it's undistinguishable. That's why inheritance is really not about interaction, but rather about definition, right? How things are defined uh, early on. Uh, whereas if there is some sort of a association, aggregation, or composition, that suggests that some communication between objects will be quite, quite visible when we, when we use them uh, at, at, you know, in the real software at, at runtime. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, modularity. So composition, and, and also I would say inheritance as well. Hel helps uh, modularity. And of course, modularity is very, very useful. It's one of the object-oriented design principle that we want to modularize things. Because recall that object-oriented um, principles, almost all of them, if not all of them, is really, from the computer standpoint, is a way to manage computer memory. So instead of creating an array of integers, we create an array of objects which contain integers. Is memory managed different, uh, differently in both cases? Absolutely, yes. An array of integers looks very different compared to an array of objects which contain individually those integers in each instance of these objects. So, uh, right? But computing, com you know, if you write a, a loop and you, and, and you, and you look uh, at all of this, fr you know, from the computational standpoint, right? Uh, computation doesn't change. If you want to compute the, 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 the sum, the total of all these numbers, it's, it's going to do exact the same algorithm, you know, having a loop which acts in each individual integer, somehow finds it in memory, and computes the sum. So computationally, mm, not much difference between, you know, object-oriented or non-object-oriented approach. But the way memory is managed, big time, it's a huge uh, impact. You know, object-oriented features, principles, uh, you know, rules, all that really suggest this is how we're going to manage memory, right? So, because as you see, you know, I, I keep drawing these boxes every, every time we go to Java class or we go to, to this class because they really do exist in memory. That's my envisioning of them when they exist in memory. So, uh, there you have it. It's memory management after all. We could essentially re, re, rewrite the language of object-oriented programming uh, by saying, uh, by keep, keep saying memory management this way or that way or some, something else. It's kind of interesting aspect that, that really this is what is the physical impact of object-oriented principles. So anyhow, clearly, anything memory management related is about modularity, but modularity uh, is is yet another another modularized aspect of what we do is that uh, having uh, separate classes of objects written in our software allows us to uh, to to create multiple files, maintain our source code not in one huge single file but in multiple files. That that's another form of of modularity. So. Is it easier to build large complex software from small components? Yes, the answer is yes. Because you have the advantage of having multiple people working on smaller components, understanding them better. And when I say multiple people, it could be just you wearing different hats. Today you're working on this class, tomorrow you're working on, the, on another class, the day after tomorrow you come back and work yet again on the original class. So it could be you, but you know, multiple people as well, right? So obviously breaking any complexity into smaller pieces helps to increase stability, understanding, right? Uh, reduce number of bugs and so forth. So, and, and also uh, 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 fortify testing, make testing more approachable, make, you know, testing at different levels, not just test the entire application when it's, once it's done. But you can write small little test cases for every class that you create and make sure that your classes can do 
what the promise was. So testing uh, individual classes and components. By the way, anytime I say software part or component, I usually uh, mean uh, a few classes very closely related to one another interacting. To me, if you have a, a number of classes that are closely related and interact with one another, I would say this is a software component. You could almost take this combination of classes and move it to a different project and plug it in and have them do the same work. It's usually very successful if you, if you can do something like that, right? Yeah. 